Shai Ames have a good one. Well, does Thompson really prove himself here? Eubank says he's technically spot on for this. He was excellent, really, in defeat last time against Joe Calzaghi, but of course that was at super middleweight. This is a division 22 pounds higher. What strategy will Eubank use? He's been keeping it a secret. Most feel his tactics will be to not get involved. And look at these body punches from Eubank, and what effect, we wonder, will the heavy-hitting cruiserweight Thompson have when he lands? Can Eubank... He's always been very, very strong, never been stopped. Will he be able to take a cruiserweight's punches? So many subplots here, Glenn. Yes, there really is. Even he looks as if he wants to have a fight early on. You would expect speed to be the key for him to be in and out, use the angles, and just try and outwork Thompson. Real speed from Eubank, that's one thing he does have here, and, and of course, a wealth of top-level experience. Thompson has been saying in the build-up he'll be in Eubank's face all night. Pressure him, make his natural extra weight tell. Eubank has started sharply here. Eubank is working to a carefully defined plan that has been honed over lonely, long weeks on Bodmin Moor with his trainer, Massimo Perez, who first taught him to box in his days in the Bronx in New York. Right hand from Thompson. And sharp with the jab, too. It does look as if Eubank's tactics are to get in, throw fast flurries of punches, get away again. Yes, there should be the, the tactics he adopts. Use the ring, use the angle, just get in quickly, get the speed, and then get out. Not be looking to mix it and make it a physical fight with the, with the much stronger Thompson. Eubank just on the run for a moment, wasn't just shaken by one of those shots, you wonder. He's come back, he's regrouped. Flawed in the first round, remember, last time by Kalzaghi with a big left hook. Lovely right uppercut from Eubank. Beautiful shot. Because he's shown some nice quick punches inside. He's very calculated about every move that he's making. Thompson, 22 wins, four defeats. He has been on the floor eight times in his career. Carl Thompson. Eubank's been down six times in all those long years. Thompson working quite nicely behind his own jab. But I think Eubank's round. Agree, Glenn? I would agree. Eubank, he just did more of the eye-catching work. He's a little bit busier, some nice little shots inside, and he's loving it. Now he's playing to the crowd. I think he was quite pleased with his round. Yes, he didn't go back to the corner. He went to a neutral corner and did a spot of posing. And there were significantly, even in Thompson's hometown, chance of Eubank, Eubank in that round. Yes, he's, he's always going to have a great deal of support. This way is where he's on the run. He just gets caught with a, an overcut there. Just a glancing blow. But he's he's on the run trying to uh, get out of the way there. Now just a, a short glancing blow. But I think it, it took a little out of him and he wanted to quickly make a hasty retreat. Thompson has 16 knockout wins in those 22 victories. A lot of his best performances, Thompson, have been away from home. Thompson in the green trunks. But you barely need the identification, do you, by now? Not when Chris Eubank's in the ring. Beautiful combination from Chris Eubank. At the moment, looks needle sharp, but he's caught by a right hand, and that's the danger for him. He did seem moved by that, Glenn. Yes, he does. It does look a difference in power. Every time he gets hit with a shot like that, he's looking to quickly get out of the way. And 12 rounds is a long time. 
to make this strategy of his work. And that's where Thompson can gain the advantage. Eubank looking to hold inside, and that's where it's physical. A couple of low blows there from Eubank. Roy Francis saying, keep your punches up to him. Francis was the referee on that tragic night of the Chris Eubank-Michael Watson fight. In fact, it was Roy Francis' first job as referee in a world title fight. Just a few tricks going in from Eubank, just trying to unsettle Thompson. from Eubank, but Thompson looking heavy-handed. And you just wonder if one of these is really going to get Eubank going. He's always had a rock-solid chin. This is a big, big jump. Two divisions in one leap. Eubank doing an awful lot to the body of Thompson. Quick flurries there. I would have thought he would have headhunted in a fight like this. Great right uppercut from Thompson. He's looking for some more heavy artillery. The battle lines, I think, are drawn here now. Eubank looking to use his speed to outbox Thompson. But that strategy involves him not getting hit too much, doesn't it? Yes, and he's not moving as much as I would think, but a nice combination there. Oh, he just rocked Thompson. Thompson's hurt. Thompson is hurt. Eubank's got him going. He has the power, even at cruiserweight. And back comes Thompson with a right hand. His legs still look a bit stiff himself. This is boiling up into the fight we thought it might be. What about this? Good punch from Eubank. We didn't think he'd have the, the power to hurt Thompson, but he certainly did there. And now he's indulging in psychological warfare. Eubank's never been noted as a great finisher, but <laughs> what about this? Well, now he's got the confidence. He knows he can hurt Thompson. And Thompson's looking very shaky. He still does a bit to me. He, I think he was taken by surprise that he was he was hurt there. A combination of punches, the right hand being the one that did the damage. And the legs went. Thompson drops the hand, which is a big mistake and an inexperience. And Eubank was very quick on him. Eubank is looking extremely sharp and accurate and technically honed here, as he said he was. Well, it was very good the way he put his punches together. There was a cluster of punches, and one got through that hurt Thompson. And I think really that's what he's got to try and do. Keep the punches going in clusters. Thompson got through the round. Here comes round three. Due to go 12, of course, the WBO Cruiserweight Championship. Eubank's 51st fight of a long, long career. He made three defences at middleweight and 14 at super middleweight. Well, Thompson's been hurt in fights before. In the European title fight with a clean tapper, he got up the floor to stop, to stop tapper. A terrific right uppercut from Thompson there. The other thing you worry about, really, with Eubank is whether all the miles on the clock all the hard nights may catch up with him. He started very, very well. Just a little hint of a bruise underneath Eubank's left eye. Nothing much, really. Simultaneous jabs from them. Well, I think the good thing in Eubank in his favour at this point is he's managed to come dictate the pace of the fight, so he can put the pressure on what he wants. This is a good round for Thompson so far, his best yet. He's starting to settle down, you feel. 
work behind his jab and he's finding Eubank with that. Eubank with those low held gloves and maybe the reflexes aren't quite what they were. I can think of a time when he would have just moved his head a fraction of an inch to get out of what the way of some of these. Well, he's having to take these jabs now. This is much better from Thompson behind the jab. And another uppercut and a right cross from Thompson. This is the first dodgy period for Eubank. He's having to show that resilience. He'll be looking for counters in there. Eubank may have postured and gone through the pseudo-regal gestures down the years, but make no mistake, this man can fight. He's shown it in the trenches on a few occasions. Well, I think the character and the toughness of Eubank has never been questioned. Now he, may, he may need it in this fight. Now there are a chance of Thompson from some of the Manchester contingent. Now this is spellbinding so far. <laughs> Eubank had a bad first minute and a half in the round. He's got through that and come back pretty well himself here. Now he's starting to outbox Thompson, but I think it was still Thompson's round. Eubank showing his experience there, just posturing around for the first two minutes and then just towards the end starting to throw eye-catching punches just to try and take the judges eyes there's that right uppercut just there was some good punches in this round for thompson he won the round for me it was steady but he got his jab working and that just kept eubank off balance and here comes another power shot from Thompson in this exchange. He, he rode it a bit, didn't he? He rode it a bit. He was coming in to get to the body. That's going to be a problem for Eubank. He is trying to throw a lot of body punches, and when he, he's got to get close to do that, and that's when he can be open. Working in that Andres corner, by the way, as Massimo Perret. Somewhere in there is Dennis Andres, former world light heavyweight champion who's been doing some sparring with Eubank in the build-up to this. Eubank at cruiserweight now. to call a winner from this point wouldn't you you know what it is a it's a very good fight i think we, everybody sensed it would be there's a lot of people came here to see this fight thompson the quiet family man who lives near the bolton wanderers football ground works in Billy Graham's Phoenix camp here in inner city Manchester says he's never had any favors he's right about that too this he's worked hard did it the, the hard way for everything he's got had good fights in Europe good cluster of shots from Thompson oh and a terrific right hand from Eubank who set the sweat spray and there there's some kidology from Thompson pretended to be hurt and suckered Eubank in, and looks at right hand, and now he's got him with a right uppercut. Right uppercut from Eubank, who needs to get to a neutral corner. Thompson is down, and he may be in trouble. It's a mandatory eight. What a beautiful shot. Eubank found him there. What an amazing fight this is. Great work from Chris Eubank. This is an extraordinary fighter. And Eubank is finding all this, knowing that if he does not win, it is the end of the glory years. Thompson might still be dangerous. Both boxers there landing with good right hands there. They're both trying to load up, looking for the other to make a mistake. And the interesting thing is we thought Thompson would be the big puncher in this fight. Eubank has looked the puncher. It's amazing that he's stepped up two weights and carried power. His power even looks better at this weight. 
unless there is a bit of a question mark about Thompson's own punch resistance. He had him down a few times, got up to win usually, to be absolutely fair to him. Thompson's come through the crisis. But at the moment, a big factor in this fight, it seems to me, is Eubank's extra resilience. Another bit of kidology from Thompson, but he is taking shots from Eubank. Eubank, big round, and there's a mutual tap of the gloves from the two fighters who are appreciating each other's qualities. Well, they're earning each other's respect in there. This is a, a great fight. Just Thompson showing kidology there. He got caught with a good right hand, just pretended it was worse than it was, and then came back with a, a big right hand of his own. There's the knockdown with the, the uppercut, and Thompson just looking as if he threw himself a little off balance at that point. He's going to throw a right hand, and he just, the uppercut was a good one, but he just, as he threw his own, I think he just moved away, but still it was a, a knockdown and a, a decent one. Timing of that shot was something else, wasn't it? Freddie King, tending to damage by the left eye of Eubank. What a fight this is. Here's round five. And those who said that this was mission impossible for Chris Eubank are having to do a hasty redraft. They could yet be proved right, though. We'll see. Good jab from Thompson, who works better when he gets the jab working. Oh, big right hand from Thompson again. It bounces off Eubank. There's a bit of a nick under the right eye now of Eubank as well. His left eye's closing up a little, you know. That left eye's closing up significantly for Eubank. That could become a big problem later on. It's becoming something of a slit. Yes, it is. It's closed very fast, that. Thompson's got to carry on with the jab. That's a good punch for him. That left eye could be a big problem for Eubank. He may not see some of the right hands coming as this develops. Thompson will be encouraged by that. Gulp of air from Eubank. Thompson's confidence for the moment appears to have been restored. There seems to be a bit of strength which is just drained from Eubank in this round. doesn't seem to have that speed and sharpness he had early on. Oh, and Thompson looking to let go with a few howitzers now. Ivan not using the ring as good as he was. And he looks as if he's on heavy legs. If the weight thing is going to tell, it would be as it went on, wouldn't it, more? Oh, big right hand, and again, Thompson's legs do a dance, and that time he wasn't kidding. That time he was hurt again. Newback knows that he may have the power to stop or knock out this fellow. This is dodging this way and that at the moment. It's nearly dodging out of the ring. Eubank coming back at the end of the round to hurt Thompson again and he does have the power to upset the champion. A real thinking performance this fight, Eubank. Well, Thompson was dominating the first two minutes of that round. Eubank came back and hurt him in the last minute. Even round? I would, I would just have lent towards Thompson. He did too much work at the beginning of the round for me to, to clinch it, but it was a good 
a very good spell at the end of the round from Eubank, who had Thompson hurt and really in a bout at the bell. Well, so much good action for you tonight. It really is a bag of goodies. And remember, when all this is over, we still have this fellow to come. Prince Nassim Hamed in a great fight against Wilfredo Vasquez until recently the WBA featherweight champion. He says round two. We shall see. Stay with us, as I'm sure you will, with the way this one's going. Eubank in those yellow trunks. Do you think Thompson will be psychologically disadvantaged, shall we say, by the fact that his best punches are not really moving Eubank yet. Most definitely, and also the fact that he knows Eubank has the power to hurt him, and that, that could have a bad effect on his thinking. He's got to continue to be positive, and he's got to try and press forward more. Most scorecards, I'm sure, will have Eubank ahead. Glenn McCrory's does. This argument is a long way from being settled. It's funny, isn't it? For so long, Eubank looked so lazy in some of his defences in his earlier era. And against Calzaghian again tonight, he's pulled out two of the most memorable performances of his career. Yes, well, I think that was really when he was in his hair day and he was getting all the attention, maybe too much attention. And now when it's much harder, good right hand from Thompson there. That was a cracking right, but significantly again, Eubank just took it. And back comes Eubank with a three-punch combination. Mohamed has a, a hard act to follow after this because this is a tremendous performance by Chris Eubank. Overhand rights from Eubank. Thompson having to take some on the way in. And Eubank shakes his head as he's caught by a right hand by Thompson. Thompson will keep on throwing them. Keep on trying to apply the pressure, and he may well believe that he will get to Eubank late on here. That left eye is closing all the time. It's, to looking, Eubank. it's looking very bad, the left eye. That, that's going to be a major problem. And there's a long way to go. He was hurt by one of them, Eubank. But look at his response. Fighting hard. to call that one waiting for the winner of this is Sheffield's Johnny Nelson who's sitting here at ringside with us Johnny this is some fight isn't it I think Chris is doing what a, a lot of uh, boxing pundits predict him in boxing to the best of his ability his ability well exceeds uh, Carl's ability and uh, what Chris has got to do is not stand there in front of him just keep boxing him keep jabbing him frustrating Carl making Carl work uh, and making Carl like, extend his energy and Chris will have a, a greater chance towards the end but he's got to preserve his energy throughout the fight Thank you, Johnny. Now, this is a problem, this left eye. They're really going to have to earn their money in that corner. They are. Look at the, the punches. Very close to the headshot for you, mate. A lot more body punches. Thompson looking relatively unmarked as we move into the second half of the fight. Looking off balance, and was that a sign of tiredness, the way he stumbled into the ropes on the far side? Well, I think tiredness has to be a factor, but also he was really trying to load up with the right hand, give it everything he could. He was squinting through that eye there. Oh, 
big right hand from Thompson. That hurt you, Bank. And is he seeing some of these right hands now through that closed left eye? With this damage, this must look like a long tunnel ahead for Eubank at the moment. He's looking the superior technician, and he's shown he has the power at the weight as well, but there's a relentlessness now about Thompson. Eubank still very very dangerous they're tiring the two of them and you'd expect that too Eubank looking very tired they're falling into the ropes unsteady on his legs a little is Thompson taking over this has been a, a very tough fight for four for you just see the sense that you know the stronger man is looks the better the longer it's going on I don't recall Eubank ever having an injury this serious in a fight. Oh, a right hand and Thompson's all over the place. He's all over the place. Roy Francis is on and Eubank stands off. Why did he do that? Why did he stand off? And it's unbelievable. He looked at first that he was that he was out, and then he says to oh, Roy Francis, so I don't know if he was kidding or what was happening, so it's hard to tell in this fight. Did he believe that Thompson was trying kidology? If he did, I, I think he was wrong. I, I, I think, think Eubank, I think Thompson was hurt. I think that's what he thought. I, I think he thought. I'm not sure how hurt Thompson was, because he was quick to reply to Roy Francis. Well, will Eubank live to regret those few seconds? Both looking very tired now. Eubank, straight right hand. Who has most left? Desire will become a big, big factor now. The way it looks at the moment, you'd be surprised if this went the full 12, wouldn't you? You would be. It isn't. Tremendous fight, and I think we've got to give credit to, to both these these boxers. But Eubank is doing so well, and I think that is the question: Was he was he rocked here? He stopped. He's a big right hand. Then the left hook. He misses there, and he falls into the ring. He's almost turning away from Eubank. There, certainly at that point, he looked badly hurt. Falls into the ropes. But then, then the referee comes in. Roy Francis comes to her, look at him. He quickly, has, he's, he just says something there. And I'm not sure whether he, he was saying, listen, I'm just kidding. But I think at first he was hurt. Well, who knows? Only Thompson can tell us. But look, I look, look at that. I tell you what, he's an Oscar winner. If he can, if he can, if he, look at the eyes. Look at his eyes. Yes, uh, he does. He's then looking at the ref. But then he could, I, I think he must have been heard at the beginning. Unravel that one. Eighth round. Seems like they've been out there for hours, doesn't it? Battling. It's a draining, grueling fight, this. Eubank fighting with one eye, almost. But still doing enough on my scorecard. I just give him one point ahead. Now, a timeout from Roy Francis. I'm not quite sure what he said to Eubank there. Oh, Eubank comes in with a right hand. What do you think Roy Francis was saying there? Well, I think at times Eubank has held in close and he shouted his instructions and he's ignored it. And I think he was maybe just telling him to, to listen to what he's saying. You also sense that one of them is ready to go, but which one? Well, it, it's appeared like that for the last few rounds. They both were desperately tired. Big punches are going in from each of them, and you just feel that either one could go. It certainly changed from that 
first session where Eubank was looking to use his speed and dance. Oh, big right uppercut, now the right hand. Eubank digs deep and comes back with two great rights. What a fight this is. Who will prevail? Are you watching Eubank's final stand? Well, there's a lot of pride in that ring. Neither one wants to give way. They both look hurt, then they come fighting back. Oh, gets through his right hand, left and Eubank showing all that resilience and rock solitude. And look at him come back with a three punch combination. Unbelievable stuff, this. Big, heavy headshots. Roy Francis takes a close look at both of them. Oh, another right and a right uppercut. Thompson, is he taking over? And every time you think he is, Eubank comes back with another flurry. But Thompson looks on top at the moment. Thompson looks strong. You wouldn't think Eubank can keep taking punches like these. These are heavy shots. Oh, he's got him with a left hook, Eubank. But Thompson resumes the assault. He had to call it off for just a split second. And now Thompson's looks look a little wobbly. Has he punched himself out for the moment? Answer no, because he has a right hand. These are boxing each other to a complete standstill. This they, is terrific stuff. They are bearing their souls, these two. This is memorable. There were times there when Carl Thompson looked on the very verge of victory, but every time that happened, Eubank came back with his own flurry, and there was one memorable left hook from him with his back to the ropes. At this point, he's just looking as if he's, he's ready to go. They're having a close look in the corner at the eye. It's swollen, almost completely shut. But he, at this point, just looks as if he's going to go in any second, and then he comes fighting back. Tremendous heart, tremendous pride. been closed for several rounds for Eubank. How much has Thompson got left? These brave gladiators. Is Eubank on the verge of being stopped for the very first time in his long career? What next here? Here's the ninth round. Thompson looks stronger at the moment, doesn't he? Big right hand there from Thompson. He does. He looks as if it's finally getting to Eubank. The, the extra weight, the extra strength. <laughs> Eubank having to lay on the ropes more. His legs seem to have gone a little. Good uppercut right hand coming out there, Eubank. You do feel that Eubank needs to get out of there, but I don't know, maybe he's happy just covering up and countering and hoping he can rock Thompson with one. Well, I think he's just maybe taking a respite there, just got to try and get a bit zap back in his legs, and now he's back with movement. a lot of lesser men Thompson you feel would have prevailed worn his man down by now big shots again in there from Thompson Ruben content to stand in the corner not the best place you feel for him both of them digging so deep and showing enormous desire in pursuit of this prize of a version of the World Cruiserweight Championship. Not much coming back from Eubank at the moment. But Thompson also looking very tired. Oh, two big rights, and Thompson has to give him. There's a third one. He 
Ollie's all over the place. Will Eubank go in this time? Thompson's head is clearing. Big right hand. Eubank's just been waiting there, just trying to, to get the energy for a big attack. Four or five cut times, it seemed, in this fight that Eubank has really had Thompson going and not been able to press home the advantage. And the crowd appreciating this work from Eubank, shouting out his name. Well, it's a sensational fight, this. This one will be talked about in years to come as one of the momentous battles in the British ring. Thompson putting the pressure on Eubank, keeping him in the corner for most of the round, and then Eubank comes out with flashy punches, big overhand right, that hurt Thompson, but again, he just couldn't follow up with the punches he needed to get the job done. And how are the judges scoring it? One from Puerto Rico, one from the United States, Dave Paris from England. Most of the pressure in the rounds is coming from Thompson, but then suddenly Eubank comes out, and he seems to hurt... Thompson more than Thompson can actually hurt him. That's why I think he feels he's getting tired. Thompson's very strong. He has to keep his energy and just try and take him by surprise with a combination like this. And here's round 10. Oh, smashing ramrod jab from Thompson. Now that's just a trip up, he tripped over his legs, no knockdown, no knockdown. Thompson acknowledges as much. Right hand. Sending Eubank reeling for a moment, but he's still keeping it together. There's Glenn McCrory's scorecard coming up for you now, in a moment or two, anyway, there it is. And now just got the, the tide turning there for the first time, I put it Hobson ahead, just the one point. I think it must be close. Some of these rounds have been open to different interpretations, and we've seen in the past how subjective the business of judging can be. Will the judges be needed? At times now, they almost seem to be fighting in slow motion. It's the legs are very tired, very tired. This has been a very hard fight. The conditioning from both fighters must have been excellent to keep this pace going, to take these touches. All that preparation on Bodmin Moore for Eubank. Is getting him through here. We're going to just falling forward, falling the arms of Thompson there. Very tired. Thompson busier. That will carry some weight with the judges. a fight to remember but which way is it going left hook now the jabs from Thompson good pressure from Thompson but I think we're just expecting something at any time from you by every round he's brought something out it's a superhuman effort this from both of them but especially from you back who you feel has gone back to the tank about 50 times And every time he comes back with just a wee bit more fuel. Thompson's round, Glenn. Yes, for me, he worked better, but the appreciation is from everybody. George Foreman on his feet at the end of that round, clapping the action. 
Thompson's landed 212. Eubank 238 from less thrown. Better precision from him. By a long way. Dangerous, Chris. You need two more rounds to win the fight, they're telling him. I think tonight that Eubank is having to experience a fight every bit as savage and draining and demanding as that memorable fight he had with Nigel Benn in 1990 at the NEC, which none of us who saw it will ever forget. Yes, he really is. This is an epic battle for Eubank. I don't think anybody really thought he had this sort of fight left in him. He's been through so many great fights, and then to... to perform like this is remarkable this might well depend on what happens in the last two rounds although we can't possibly be absolutely certain of that Thompson has certainly been doing the better work and more of it in the second half of the fight Eubank seemed to be the boss for the most part in the first half, if generalizations are possible. Yes, I think at this point, Thompson looks the fresher. I think we expected that the extra weight, the jump up, had to take its toll, and it is in these late rounds. Oh, huge right hand from Eubank. Was Thompson hurt by that? Just wondered whether he was holding on for a moment. It seems okay. He's shouting you back to work off the jab in the corner. Good left hook in there from Thompson. Again, just trying to keep the pressure on you, man. The draining body shot coming in from Eubank. These two, well, there'll be almost a fusion of spirits between them after experiencing this together between these ropes. Eubank's covering up while he's taking a few of those on the gloves. Eubank trying to use all of his experience in these laid rounds just to make his work accurate not to waste energy Thompson's still doing more I wonder if Eubank is thinking in the back of his mind that he's in a lead and is in a situation where he's holding on and staying out of trouble I, if he is doing that he may be making a mistake boxers are often the worst scorers of fight when they're involved in them well, it's, it's very hard to really know what's going on point-wise when you're in there. You know he's in a very tough fight. But look at that dancing Eubank just did there. Look how fresh his legs were to do that. I didn't think he still had that in there. Well, he was dancing, but then he lost balance towards the end, which tells you that he is tight. He's just trying to look fresh. Thompson's still looking the better, putting more shots in. Thompson is winning these late rounds, you feel. There wasn't a whole lot from Eubank in that round, really. George Foreman, who's standing about two yards away from Glenn and I, is on his feet and clapping. He's appreciating this fight, and rightly so. Well, you couldn't fail to appreciate this. This is a marvellous fight. Thompson, so much pride. He wants to defend his title. It's his hometown in Manchester. He wants to have a good fight, but Eubank is making him fight every step of the way. But I guess you've got Thompson pulling away now, haven't you? I, I've given him nearly everything of the last few rounds. He's just had been up on three rounds ahead. I've given Thompson the last four, but I had Eubank in a useful lead before that. So it still might be close. Who knows? The 12th and last round, people are on their feet all around this arena. You see Helen Mirren, the actress, in the background there. Two rows back. And Eubank looks for a big finish. 
has he been holding a little back? What were the odds on the draw? 33 to 1. <laughs> well, this is going to be a hard one to say. A lot of these grounds have been pretty close, but I give it Thompson pulling away towards the end. Handy lead of three points. He's just looked the pressure. But Eubanks had some marvellous moments in this fight. Doubling up on the jab, right hand. Sharp work from Eubanks still. Eubanks talking to him now. Right they can both see the finishing tape. Eubank holding his arms a lot, trying to send out signals to the judges, maybe. I think they're too experienced to buy that. I think it's also a, a little kidology to Thompson, maybe trying to just make him lose his cool, just lull him into a, a big punch. We didn't think he could go to our so I noticed you back there nod to George Foreman. There's a smile and a, oh, he's got a permanent wink with the, the left eye, so it may not have been a wink. <laughs> he's had that for about half an hour too. Chance of Eubank ringing around, son of Thompson too. It's been one of the great fights seen in the British ring. Eubank again says something to Thompson. He had to take a, a left hook for his effort. Eubank trying to suck the Thompson in. That's right, and look for counter. You might expect a big finish to this round from Eubank. 23 seconds left. If he's going to do that, he'll need to do it fast. Does Eubank feel he's ahead? They'll both claim the victory here, I'm sure. He's carrying out a running conversation in there as the seconds tick away. Maybe Eubank just got that last round. Look how the fans here, nearly 20,000 of them at the 9X in Manchester. Celebrate. You think Thompson's won? I think, he's I think it's close. Probably by about three points. But I think Eubank has gained so much respect from that performance. They're carrying Eubank around the ring. But this really is all part of the psychological warfare. You can ignore this. They're carrying him around like he's a winner. Thompson now has his arms aloft. A great appreciation for a great fight. I don't think we'll sit through many more as grueling and as tough as that. Yes, it's been a privilege to witness such a fight. Eubank, that left eye was a handicap for him for such a long way in the contest. It was a, certainly a factor. And I remember saying with about five rounds to go, I didn't, this doesn't look as if it can go 12. It did. For a, a long way through the fight, it just went to and fro. You thought one was going to go, then the other one. It was that sort of fight, but Thompson, for me, just had the better work rate. Eubank come with a, in snatches. There was some great work where he had Thompson in big trouble, but he just didn't have the work rate throughout the round to get the, the points. But did Eubank win most of those early rounds? How far ahead was he before Thompson took over? That's going to be how those early rounds were scored. Could be quite a factor. Yes, he was winning big. I have a, a 10 8 round in the fourth. Yeah, yeah, with the with the with the uh, with with Thompson being down. So he was doing very well early on, but as the fight went on, it didn't appear that Eubank's punches were hurting Thompson quite as much. We're going to get the decision any moment now from Michael Buffer, Puerto Rican judge, American, and an English judge. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, but before we do. How about a round of applause for this great example of hand-to-hand -hand combat?
here in a boxing ring between champion and challenger. The scoring is as follows. Luis Pavon scores about 114 to 113. One sixteen to one thirteen from John Paris. One fourteen to one thirteen from John Stewart for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, W. Thompson has got it. And Eubank, after such a brave gladiatorial effort, is beaten.